just take a breath and just, you know, there's no pressure. There's it's just the chance to share Christ and share love with everyone. And, you know, we all share the same Father and the same Savior and the same belief. And it's good to have people to who are, in this, who are there, to brothers and sisters who are in Christ. It's great. Um, and just because you see one sheet of paper up here like this, don't think it's going to be like super short. Just want to let you warn you in advance. Um, normally I have like six or seven pages of, of, of notes. I only have like, only have like the, the, today's the sermon for the Bible verses. Um, it's part of this, the way this week, this week went. Um, I've never had this happen before. I mean, I've been a pastor, ordained pastor since 2015. And writing sermons for me is like, no problem. I, I'm, I'm writing one, I've got three more in my head ready to go. This week I'd sit down and I'd write a sermon and it just, wouldn't come. I got, I got the notes, got all kinds of verses, I'm ready to go, I'm excited about it, and then I just want to do time right, it was like, nothing. Happened three times this past week, and last night my wife comes home from work, and she goes, about 10.30 last night, she goes, she usually, usually reads my sermons before I, before I present them, so she can, she can critique them a little bit, and you know, then ask questions, whatever, and I said, I don't have one. And she's like, uh, you're preaching tomorrow. I was like, yeah, I know, but uh, I said, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna get up early, and you know, and of course, the second I lay, lay down and go to bed last night to go to sleep, to get up early, it just comes. So I start thinking, I think I thinking about it. Like, do I need to get up and write, write it down? I'm like, nope, don't do that. <laughs> this past week, whenever you start writing it down, then you get this little, little funk, so don't do that. So I, do, I so, uh, kind of winging it a little bit today, but it's, it's something I'm very familiar with. So it's not like I'm going to be just winging it. I, I just, I've been doing the last nine years, so I get to share that with you. Before I go any further, let's take it to the Lord in prayer. We thank you, Father, for this day. We thank you for your chance to be in this, this building to share the, your word and to share your spirit with all the people who are here today. And we thank you for being with us throughout this week, whether a good week or a trying week. We know you were there. We were never alone. We always had you on our side and, and with us and, and in us and guiding us in our path. And I thank you for being with me this week because I know I was could have been discouraging, but I was never discouraged because you were there and I know you were, you were in all these things and you were there and helped me through this time. And I pray that everyone else in this congregation was able to do that too, to experience you and then know that you were there and to feel your presence and to know that you were in everyone there. And, and be, we know your presence is here today. We can feel your presence today in the song and the, the wonderful service of the missionaries in Peru. That's fantastic what they're doing down there and people who would never know you or get to know you or even a glimpse of you without the help of the missionaries all over the world and then the ones in Peru. We thank you, Father, for them and bless them and be with them in the works that they do. We pray that you'll bless the people here in this, this congregation as they go in the mission field of our home country and our own county, community, their own homes, to take your word with them and to share the spirit with them and to share you and their love for you and their love for them be shown in Christ-like throughout their households and throughout their community. We thank you, we thank you for this, this message. We pray that it's one that you would have, us, have me to bring today to the congregation. And I pray it'll be one that they can learn and, and show and grow from and, and to experience and do in their own lives. We thank you, we pray all these the things in your name. Just let me pray, amen. About nine years ago, I was teaching Sunday school class at the Middletown Church of God in Cable, Ohio for about three years. And my Sunday school classes kept coming back to, what are we, the church, doing in our communities? It's a very small church, and I kept bringing up, you know, we do, certain, we do lessons from the Bible, and we say, well, what are you doing that mirrors what, we're doing, what we just read? What are you doing in the community? And it usually came back, nothing. But what is this church doing with other churches to mirror what we're reading in the, in our, in the, in the lessons? And then again, it came back, well, nothing. And I started thinking, well, there's supposed to be unity in a church. Supposed to all we're working together to do well in our communities. And, and some of the people in the congr- the, my class thought I was kind of being kind of negative. I wasn't. I was, just, I was just questioning, why weren't we doing what we were reading? But they took it as I was, you know, why aren't, we do- why aren't you doing what you're doing? <laughs> I wasn't what I was doing. I was just, it was, I was part of it. I was part of the congregation. I wasn't doing what I was reading either. So it was, you know, what should we do? And then one Sunday, I got the impression that God spoke to me, he didn't speak to me like come, you know, like speak to me verbally, but I, got, I felt that he wanted me to stop teaching Sunday school and start visiting the churches of Champaign County and tell the pastors of Champaign County he wants unity in the churches. He wants all the churches to come to work together in the community for the good of the community and the spread of the love of Christ throughout the community. And, the, and so that Sunday I went, I 
after my Sunday school lesson, I talked to one of the women there, and I said, can you take her from my class for a while? She said she would, so she's, nine years later, she's still teaching it. <laughs> and I bet, like I bet it's been a personal mission, that it was a, it was a God-given mission. God told me to, I felt he told me to go to visit churches and say we under church unity. And um, I learned very quickly, the last thing pastors want to do, pastors want to do on a Sunday morning is talk about something new right after a sermon. That's the last thing they want to do. They want to, they want to go home and relax, go, you know, back in with other fishes and stuff to go to to have, to have you know, a lunch or whatever, just, just to relax and unpack from the sermon, because it takes a lot to write a sermon sometimes, and it takes a lot out of you to, to, to talk and bring the spirit, and they just want to relax. And here I am saying, you need to do church unity. Well, I, wasn't, I didn't say it. Was, I, was, I was just saying, you know, God wants you to do church unity. That was the, the only message was just, just that. There was nothing else to it. I did this for months, and I kept hearing you, you need to go to the ministerial association and tell them. You need to go to the ministerial association and tell them, you know, that you want you, God wants unity in the good churches because you know, let's the pastors of the Champaign County attend this meeting and that'd be a good place to do it. But none of the pastors knew where it was, which I thought was kind of unusual. They were telling me to go to a ministerial association, ministerial association for pastors that the pastors didn't go to. So finally I went to a, a, the Nazarene church here in Urbana and and the pastor said, you need, he said the same thing, you need to go, he was, he was kind of busy, I've got things to do, I don't have time to talk about this, but you, know, you need to go to the ministerial association. Like, okay, when and where? And he goes, well, I think it's on the second Thursday of the month at 1030 at the Methodist Church. Um, you need to go see this other pastor because he, you know, he's, he's, the, he's the current president. And I was like, okay. So I left there and drove to the other church on the same day and they were, still, they were just getting out of the service. So I talked to the pastor and there and I said, I heard you're the president, and you know, I need to talk to you about speaking to the ministerial association about church unity. And he said, I'm no longer the, past, no longer the president, but you know, just come anyway. He gave me the day, what, gave me the day, what time it was. It, was, it is the second Thursday it's at 10.30 at the Methodist Church. So I just showed up, and they're like, you're not on the agenda. We can't have you talk about this right now because you're not on the agenda. Come back next month and tell us you know, what you have, what's going on. I said, okay, I'll, I'll do that. So all the month goes by, and again, I'm, I'm Every week I prayed for word to go to visit church wives every week. I go to different churches. I went to over close to 60, 60 churches on Sundays visiting, saying this, this, that simple phrase, God wants church unity in his, wants unity in his churches in Champaign County. And I went to the ministerial association and I sat there and they said, okay, it, it, you've got your couple minutes here. Give us your thing. What, is, what, is, what, is, what, are you, what are you here for? And I said, there's only like, 10 pastors there. Uh, uh, there's close to 80 churches in Champaign County. There are 10 pastors there. I said, God told me to visit your churches and talk to the pastors and says he wants unity in Champaign County. And they asked me a question that kind of took me for yeah, a little bit. They said, but what's your, what's your plan? What's the plan for unity in Champaign County? I was, I was sat for a second. It's like, I was on, I, was, I don't have one. God just told me to tell you he wants church unity. He didn't, tell, he didn't give me a plan. He didn't give me an a, a, a outline of what to do next. He just told me to tell you he wants this in Champaign County. And they kind of like, well, you know, okay, yeah, but a plan would be nice. What would what, what you want us to do? I was, at the time, there was a, I think it's still going on, there's a program that a lot of churches do. It's called Back to Church, where on one Sunday, I think it's in the fall, Churches get together and they have a back to church and they advertise it for people who've been out of the church for a while to come back to the church. And I said, well, let's, let's do that. Let's do a, take out a full page ad and the Abandoned Daily Citizen, this is back when people actually read the paper. And they said, well, okay, okay that's, a, that's a good idea. So we, I got, it, went to, got a list of all the, back then I was blessed that the Abandoned Citizen had a, a pamphlet that had all the churches in it from Champaign County. They had put together for one of their editions of the paper. And I called or emailed every single church on that list and asked them they want to be part of this one page ad to be in, you know, back to school, back, I mean back to school, back to church program, program that one Sunday. And uh, a lot of them said yes, and some of them, of course, said no. Because we also asked for like, it was like $50, it was like $1,000 for, for a full page on the paper. We, the church, the, the ministerial association didn't have that kind of funds. And so we didn't, so I had to get the money for that. And I went back to make the presentation to the ministerial association. They, Here are the churches who are on board to do it, and that wasn't all of the churches. And they said, well, let's, let's do the ad with just the churches who paid for it. And I said, no, <laughs> this is about church unity. This is about all the churches. Let's include all the churches in this, even if they didn't pay. Because it's cool to say that the ones who paid, paid for the other ones. They didn't, you know, they didn't pay extra, but they pay, also helped pay for the ones who couldn't pay. 
And they said, yeah, but okay, well, but they, put, they go on the bottom of the list. But the ones who paid first, the top of the list, and the ones who didn't pay the bottom of the list. I was like, okay, I'll make that concession as long as they get in there. So we, we did that stuff, and we got a, it was well received. It was, don't think anybody saw like a huge uptick in attendance on that Sunday, but it was a chance for the churches that actually got to do a little something together. And over the years, things have happened um, that were kind of church unity like. We had, um, when I was talking to the Ministerial Association, one of the, uh, the youth leader there heard what I was doing. And he said, that's, a, that's, that's unity, that's a really good idea. So he started a thing called um, Hope for Good. I don't know if this church took, took part in that. It was, it was a long time ago. But it took about every year for three years, local churches from Champaign County got together and did services in the community, mowed lawns, uh, built um, ramps for people who needed it for elderly or disabled. And they painted, painted things, they built stuff, they did, just did a little did some cleanup around the neighborhood. Yeah, one week a month for, I mean, one week every year for three years. And that just kind of fell apart and it's, people stopped doing that. And then we did a, an event called um, Faith Encounter. I don't know if anybody attended that. It was at the Gloria Theater. Again, did it for three years. It was just had a guest speaker come in and it was like a big church service, but for all the churches of Champaign County. Different bands from different churches would come and sing at the, at the event. And we had about 150 to 300 people a night for all three nights in different churches coming together and it was just a big, a big service, different, a lot of songs and a, and a message. And, and the, for the, the, third, for the third year, um, I was invited to come be part of the team to organize the, the third year. And I said, because you know, I, I, I was often called, they don't, they don't remember my name, but they call me the Unity Guy. I said, the Unity Guy come and we'll, we'll invite him. So I went and I, they said, so these event, these are this great faith encounter is really good event, but it's, it's, it's just a big church event. But nothing happens afterwards. The churches don't come together and do things. They didn't, it's not bringing unity. It's just bringing well, it's bringing unity to service, which is great. It's good, but it doesn't it, it doesn't last. It's just one night or the three nights, and it's, and it's done. And they said, well, put together a presentation. What you think we should be doing? Again, what's your plan? <laughs> come back with three. What we should be doing? And come bring it to us and. and well, maybe we'll look at that and we'll do that for the third year. We'll do something different for the third year. Because they all agreed they needed to do something different for the third year because of the two years before, again, just big church services. They didn't, nothing came out of it. Really substantial. So I spent the next month putting together a presentation of what they could do with, um, during the three days. Not just have the services, but have some classes and have uh, the, the vestibule and the, the um, Gloria full of churches with, with their missions, their local missions in it. So people can come, could sign up and be part of it or know what the, the churches are doing in the community. And plus, plus little seminars throughout the, the three days of, of what we could do to, together in churches in our community to, to further unity and help our communities. I emailed them the presentation. The next day I got an email back saying, we're going to do the same, the third year, the same year we did the last two years. <laughs> so, okay, that's, that's okay. So we did three of the same ways. Again, it's a great, it was a great event. It was a really good, it was a really good worship service. It was really good all three years. And then again, four years ago, I don't know if uh, if you took part in this, but Revive Ohio, if anybody ever heard of that. But um, Pete Yost and I kind of got that going. And Pete Yost is only most people know Pete Yost, but if you don't Pete Yost, Pete Yost is very active in the churches of Champaign County. He's very active in trying to get them to work together and do unity in Champaign County. We worked together to bring Revive Ohio into to Champaign County, and we did that for the event, and that was went over really well for a, the whole week. If it's not familiar, it's every day a, a groups of people go out in the community throughout Champaign County, groups of four, and you just find people on the street, or you go to a store or a place of work, and you ask them a simple question: How can I pray for you today? That was, that's, and then you could you get a hope that they would give you something to pray about, and. We had these little wristbands that were colored and they had different verses in them from the Bible. Basically the Roman road, Roman's road to um, salvation. And we would read those, have them, have them give, give them a free, a free Bible as well. And they'd look at the colors and they'd read the Bible verses and help them to understand, you know, that and get them interested in the Bible and get them interested in, in salvation. And at the end of the, 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 the week we'd have a big service and the best part of the whole thing, I'm kind of, I miss it, but one of the best things of the whole time was at lunchtime we'd come back to a, a lunch church, different church every day, and people would talk about their experiences with going throughout the community. You know, it was just praying for people and witnessing people and sharing the gospel with people, and it was, that was the best part of hearing how people reacted and people, how some people, you know, were really, really interested in it. They even had a 
program if you got saved, you give you to, to pray for Christ to come into your life while you were out about. There was a discipleship program where you could actually spend a year or more with, a, with an individual who's on the team discipling about the Bible and about church. And, and it's not, we didn't just have them on the field and just leave them, but just hang with disciples as well, which was, which was good. And at the end of the week, we, we did the big, uh, the big celebration, the big presentation. Then the following week, we came together and we had like 60 people show up at the meeting, which is pretty good. 60 people wanted to see where it was going. Then the following week, it was 20 people. The following week, it was five. And eventually, it just kind of faded away. Revive Ohio no longer is active in Champaign County. I tell you about all these three events because I, I had hope as the unity guy that each one of these events would bring unity to Champaign County churches. Churches working together for this brief amount of time, I was, I was hoping and praying that they would come together and want to do more afterwards. Like with Revive Ohio, you rode in a car with someone with up to three people from three different churches in the same vehicle. I was hoping and praying that during those, those times the conversations would turn to, you know, what does your church do? What does your church do? Oh, we, uh, can we do that too? Oh, yeah, let's and then start working together and do more things in the community. And one of the last vehicles I rode in, I rode in with uh, Darren from, uh, he's at Jenkins Chapel now. He wasn't, pa- he's pastor there and I wasn't back pastor back then. But uh, I talked to him, well, I'm about, I'm about unity. And he's like, oh, so am I. The churches of Lewisburg aren't very connected at all. And they, so I gave him the number of, of my pastor at the time, from who's the North Lewisburg Church. And he called and they talked. And now, four years later, there's a group of churches in North Lewisburg who are actually working together and doing things in the community. They have services together. They do things in the community together. They help each other out with different things off the community together. They've, it's, there's some unity growing in North Lewisburg, which came from, wasn't me, it was just riding the car together and sharing our vision about unity and moving forward with it. I was so hoping and praying that they, through all these events that after this would happen, that would happen everywhere. But for some reason, that hasn't happened in Champaign County. That hasn't really caught on that people haven't wanted to do things further in being united. And you may have been wondering is how or why, there's many different reasons, but the, the churches in America are very isolated, we're very siloed, we're very close-knit. They're good congregations, they do, great, they do good things in the community inside the church, but as far as outside the church, it's not so much. They could, it's hard to get them to come together and work together for long periods of time. And unity is very important because, for one thing, Jesus wanted it. Jesus wanted unity in the churches of, of this world. It was so important to Jesus himself. The very last prayer of Christ recorded in the Bible, and you put the slide up there, the first slide, John 17, part of John 17, 20 through 23, was about this very thing. This is so important to Christ. He, the very last prayer before he died on the cross, he first prayed for his disciples. He prayed for them. He prayed to God to take care of them and to guide them and help them through this time. And then the 20 through 23, he said, my prayer is not for them alone, talking about the disciples. I pray for those who believe in me through your message, the church. All the, of them that may be one, Father, just as you and I in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me that, you, that they may be as one as we are one. In that I in them and I in you and me so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and I have loved them even as you have loved me. If you catch that, it's very important. If the people who believe in me from what the apostles tell them and then what they disciple others and make their disciples tell others, if they believe in me, the rest of the world will know without a doubt that I am the Son of God and you were sent here by you were, I was sent here by you to spread the gospel, this gospel by, the, by their love for each other. That's how important it is. We look at the world today and people are wondering, how does it get so bad? Oh, what are this, oh, the crimes and the, the, the poverty and, and immorality, immorality of the world? It's because 
we are not unified. The world looks at the church and they see us in our individual churches, not working together, and they don't see the love. They don't see the love between the churches and working together. They, they, so they assume this church is different from this church, or this church doesn't, doesn't like that church. And in most cases, that's not true. There's, in most cases, churches don't, we don't dislike other churches. Hopefully, you know, that's not the way it is. But, you know, if, but that's the way the world sees it. They don't see the love. They don't see us loving each other. So they're like, if the church is about love, where is this love I'm supposed to see? I don't see it. And this is one of the devil's greatest weapons that he doesn't have to do much about. If we keep dividing and stay divided, it makes his job a whole lot easier because we're separated, we're not sharing the love and the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit together to work in our communities. And the devil's like, sitting back on, you guys keep, keep yourself separated, build your walls, keep in your little silos, and I'll, I'll, be, I'll be okay with that because it's keeping you separated. And the rest of the world won't know your love because they're not seeing the love between each other and then them sharing that love with their communities. It's, so it's a very, unity is a very serious thing. Like I said, Christ prayed for it. It's a very serious thing in, in this world. And this country and this world would be a whole lot better if we could just put aside these differences and come together and unify. And I've often asked my pastors, quite often I said, well, their doctrine is different than my doctrine. How can I work with them? They don't believe the same way I do. I said, it's simple. It's been, Paul mentioned it quite a few times in his writings to the churches. Because churches back then were named after the cities they were in. They weren't, named, they weren't denominational. They were just named after the city they were in. But uh, Paul made it quite clear that, yes, you have differences. Because back then they had a, the, the problem of the, the, new, the new Christians who were saved and were eating everything. Then you had the Messianic Christians, the ones who still kind of did, did the Jewish um, kept the Jewish laws from the old, the old Testament and the old things, they were still saying, you can't eat that meat, that's, uh, that's, that's, un, that's unclean. God told us not to eat that meat. And the new Christians were saying, well, you know, Paul said, you know, that Christ said we can eat this, this food. So, and Paul said, this is, you're both right. If you want to be like I've told you, like Christ has showed me, that revealed to me that you can eat whatever you want, that nothing, God made nothing unclean. You can eat whatever you want. That's great. If you want to go back to the old rules and still eat just the, the clean meat that was from the Old Testament, like it was back then. That's good too. If that's how you want to follow, that's how you want to believe, that's, that's great. But you guys need to come together because you both share the greatest thing in common, and that's Jesus. You all love Jesus. You all believe he was born of a virgin birth. You believe in his teachings when he was here. You believe he died on a cross for your sins. You believe he came back for you. After three days, you believe all these things. These things we all have in common. No matter what, what Christian church there is in the world, you have all these things, these three things in common. The birth, the sacrifice, and the resurrection. We all believe. That's something we can all get behind and, and share in our communities together. Yeah, we may believe a little bit doctrine, a little bit, a little bit differently, um, but that's okay. You believe how your church believes, and we'll believe how we church believes, but we can still come together under Christ and serve our communities together because there's great needs in this community. In Champaign County alone, does anyone happen to want to guess at what the, the top two or three needs of Champaign County are? Any ideas what those would be? Number one is transportation. It's, tr it's very hard to get transportation in, in this, this city because you don't have public transportation except for CTS, which is good, but it's hard, it's really hard to get, I and mean, when you need it, you can't get it because someone else, you're not, you have to schedule in advance, and there's a price to do it, and the further you go, the more people are in the vehicle, you know, the more it's going to cost you to go, and if you don't have the money, you, you can't pay for that, but anyway, the transportation is the number one thing. The second thing is housing. Affordable housing in Champaign County is really, really difficult, and if you can't get a car to get a job to pay for a house that, or an apartment for the prices of Champaign County, then you're really in trouble. And Champaign County, is, homelessness is very, Caring, Caring Kitchen, which is a fantastic organization, they're almost full all the time. They have a waiting list of people waiting to get in. Because you can only stay there three months at a time, then you gotta get out, and then 
you know, if you got no transportation to get a job, to get a house during that time, you just to re recycle the whole pattern over again. And as an individual church, as like the Faith Fellowship, or any most of the churches in Champaign County, you, this individual church cannot afford to buy everyone in Champaign County a car that they need, or get the transportation they need, or a lot of times the trouble is um, drugs are a problem in Champaign County, like, like most places in the world today, but there are people who get busted for a drug, and it's a felony drug, a, a felony drug conviction, you can no longer get a driver's license. So now you've got this felony hanging over your head, so it's hard to get a job in the first place, and now you can't get a driver's license because you're a felony. So you can't get a car and you can't get a job, and then where are you? In the, again, one single church cannot solve all these problems in the community. That's why if you unite, though, and share your resources as all, then you can help out the community a lot better. And again, the, the Bible example, I didn't put it down because I, I, I just last minute because I was struggling this week with the sermons. But in Acts 2, go back and please read Acts 2. That's, that, that's the very beginning of the church. Of course, the very beginning of the church was when, when Christ told Peter, you are the stone in the church on which I'm, the stone in which I build this church. And he was, that, was, that was the beginning of the church. But the church as a, as a whole, it started in Acts 2 and after Pentecost. And when Paul got, Paul got done speaking to all the people who saw them speaking in tongues and, and speaking in their own languages and stuff like that, and he's, he's talking to them about, about what this was and people got, about Christ and why he was here. People seeing the people with the, the Holy Spirit upon them, how, what they, the things they were doing, they were healing people, and they were talking in their own different languages and stuff. They were like, "This is amazing!" And, and Paul says, "You can have this too. Repent of your sins, accept Christ as the Son of God, and your Lord and Savior, and you too can have what we had." Three thousand people were saved that day, which is, you know, back in the first century, that's wow. They didn't have. Facebook go, hey, come on, come to the church right now. This guy Paul's speaking, and their people, they're, they're talking my language, and they're healing people. Just word of mouth, just the Spirit moved throughout the community, and people came and were saved. And also, you notice, I, I kind of I skipped over, it was very important. I said that that day, God added to the church 3,000 souls. Not the people there, not Paul, not the people, you know, with the Holy Spirit. God saved those people. That's one thing we, I'm kind of all over the side here, but kind of, it's kind of pressure, pressure we put on ourselves to save people. No one can save a person. That's not your job. That is God's, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. That's their, that's their job. It's God's job to save, not yours. But it is your job to share the gospel, to share the love of Christ with those in there. But anyway, that's, that's, was the beginning of the church, and what really was great back then was, follows on in Acts 3 and 4, the people who were saved didn't go off and start different churches everywhere. I mean, they started, they started worshiping in their, in, their, in their homes, but they still come together and, and worship together throughout the week and stuff. And, but they came together every single day, and they shared their resources every single day for those who didn't have it. The first church ever was united. They cared for the community. They loved their people so much. They sold their goods, and the money they had left over, they brought in and put in a big till, and they shared it with all those who didn't have it. They shared it. And that's how things should happen in Champaign County and throughout the, the country, is the churches come together and share in their resources and helping those who, have, who don't have it. By helping them, showing them the love of Christ. Again, one church can't do it, and if all, even if all the churches of Champaign County came, came together right today, there wouldn't be enough funds to you know, find housing for everyone. There wouldn't be enough funds to buy cars for everyone today. But if you feed and you house and you give five cars this week, God said in his word, if you bless my people with my son's gospel, I will bless you in the double. In fact, said I, his vision was, your cup will overflow your benefits and the blessings of what I will give back to you for what you do will overflow you. Of course, we don't do it for ourselves. We do it for our community. But, but if, you do, if you love your community and love your, come together and unite and do things for your community, I will bless your churches beyond you, can ever, you could ever imagine. And it gives me, I'm getting goosebumps now, just thinking about the churches of Champaign County coming together 
and loving the community together and sharing resources, not making it about the building, not making it about their doctrine, or com- but making it about Christ and our brothers and sisters out there who are in need. Not picking and choosing, but anyone in need, the church could help. This is why unity is so important in Champaign County and the world. If we could do Champaign County and it could spread throughout Ohio and the world, imagine what our world would be like that way if we all loved and helped each other and shared each other instead of isolating. And I mean, don't get me wrong. I've, 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 I've told this before, and I've, I get yelled at a lot <laughs> at, at churches and in ministerial services and just pastor meetings because I bring this up and, so you're saying we're not doing great things here? We have a food pantry. We feed 300 people every two weeks. And we, we do, I, I say, that is good. Those are needed. Keep doing that. Keep, do, you know, keep doing, you're not telling you to stop doing that. We're telling you to do more. We're telling you to come together and, and maybe five more churches can help with your food pantry. Maybe they could make it once a week instead of every two weeks or once a month. They could make it daily. Maybe if people, you know, if we could just start sharing. So I don't say, I don't, I'm not saying they're do, you're not doing what God's telling you. You're not doing. Churches in Champaign County, a lot of them are doing good things. I mean, this church just, what was it, last week? Did the, the backpack, give her a close 100, 100 backpacks? That was fantastic. There was a great need for that. Because usually the Lutheran church across town there, they do that. They didn't do that this year. There was a big gap for no book bags and supplies this year because Lutheran church wasn't doing it. You guys stepped up and did it. That's unity. I mean, it wasn't, you didn't do it with the Lutheran church. It wasn't designed that way, but that's, you, took, you filled in a space that they couldn't do. I mean, you probably didn't, I didn't even know they didn't do that this year. But God did, and he put it upon you. And then look how successful it was because God knew there was a need, and you guys supplied it. Imagine if the, you know, one of the churches in Champaign County said, well, can we help with the book pack program too? How many more book packs, backpacks you would have had? I mean, we need more supplies and money and stuff you could have. If you come together, you could help so many more, and again, that would just grow. So, I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying they're not doing good things. Churches in Champaign are doing good things. The food pantries are needed, but again, like I said, I could do better. But Christ said, this, this surprised when I first read it a long time ago. <laughs> no, I was. Christ said before he left, you will do greater things than me. I sat there and go, I read it two or three times. Christ said that I, I could do greater things than him. He saved people. He brought people back from the dead. I don't see myself doing that. I don't even begin to imagine myself doing that. But if Christ said it, I know it's true. And I know it's, not, it's, it's what he wants. It's what he's kind of saying. You know, he's saying, kind of saying, Christians, people who follow me, my servants, guess what? I have given you power, the power of the Holy Spirit to do things greater than me. Please do them. So yes, these, these churches are doing good things, but imagine <clears throat> the greater things they could do if they could come together and bring the resources together and work together. The things that could, the problems not, not solve, but greatly diminish in Champaign County. And imagine the numbers of the, of the con- you know, we shouldn't really think, we don't think of numbers of congregation, that, don't think that way. But you know, we all churches do. I mean, most churches keep track of people who are there on the side. We had 30 this Sunday, we had 40 last Sunday, we only had 10 this week, most churches do that. Again, the more you bless people in your community, the more people God will send to your church. The less you do in your community, God's like, you know, I'll, I impress upon them to go to church, but again, what's, where's, what's the why? Yes, you're doing good things, and most churches in Champaign County are, are good. I've been to, visited over 50, 50 churches in Champaign County. Now I can tell you, most churches in Champaign County are very, very similar. The services are the same. They're, they're, not, they're not all this, they may have a different order, but they're all pretty much the same. Everyone, pretty much every church takes, you know, prayer requests. They do pray. They sing songs. Have some, some guy up here, some talking head, talk for 15 minutes to an hour. Every church in Champaign County does that. We are so similar, we are so alike, and that we, we, the people, build the walls. We ourselves keep us separated. You're the church. Like I said earlier, in the Acts, the churches were named after the cities, because that's where, that's where they were at. And the churches back then, which church we get from, from the Greek word ekklesia, you probably heard before ekklesia, which means called out assembly. 
or an assembly of people who are different from others, different from others because they, they follow something. They follow the same group. They have a group of people who follow the same idea, or the same track of, in life. They're an ecclesia. ecclesia. That is where the, the word church comes from. And there wasn't, wasn't denominations back then. There was just church names. And they met in houses. They met in the streets. They met in public spaces. Every day they got together. Am I saying, let's get, all get together every day? <laughs> it's kind of hard to do. We, all, we have jobs. We have families. We have lives. But the churches themselves could come together a lot more often than once a year for Faith Encounter or Revive Ohio, which would give me a good, a great, Champaign County can put on, put on an event. I mean, churches of Champaign County can come together and they can put on an event, like they, they can, 300 more people can come up and show up and, and be at that. And it's, and they're great and they're very spirit moved, and they're, but, but they're temporary. They come and they go. They take a long time to put together, trust me. <laughs> Faith Ohio, Faith, Faith Encounter and, and uh, Revive Ohio took a long time. And I'm, I kind of hate to admit it, but the, the main problem that Pete and I had getting Champ, the Revive Iowa come to Champaign County was one of the main conditions for Re- Revive Iowa started in Texas. It came was Re- Revive, a Time to Revive is the name of the organization. And they wanted, we wanted to come to, it's been in Ohio for a while, in Indiana, and we wanted to come to Champaign County. The one, one of the main things they have to say, you have to have 20 pastors, separate pastors on board from different churches before we even come to Revive Ohio in your county. It took us forever to get 20 pastors together just to say, okay, yeah, let's do revive, just, just to agree to do Revive Ohio. And in the end, I don't think we, I don't think we ever got 20 pastors. We just, revive Ohio just said, okay, well, let's come anyway. Because, <laughs> yeah, we had close. We had close, we had close to 20. And it was a great event. But again, that's just the culture of the American church today is very separated and, and, and fearful. Because another fear I've heard is, well, if we start coming together, well, what if this church takes people from my church and they go start going to that church? What well, if they, well, other people start being churches and go to other churches? And I'm like, that's okay. It's all one church. Wherever they feel comfortable at, service, you know, worshiping God, that is God's church. Because the church isn't this building. The church is us. And wherever we go, wherever, you know, hopefully any congregation Christian congregation in the country you visit, you can feel at least a little humbling that all the, everyone there believes in the same thing you do. Believe in, they believe in Christ. They believe in this, the resurrection and, and his life and his sacrifice for us. But differences can be complicated. There's some people, there's a, I'm not going to mention the name of the church, I'm not going to go, I'm not, I'm not bashing them either. There's, there's one church here in town in this Champaign County, I was saying it's not even in town, it's in Champaign County, there's very much about, period, we will not do unity because we have the word. We preach the Bible the way it's supposed to be preached. We preach it the way God wants us to do it. We're it. We're the church. Anybody else in Champaign County, church in Champaign County, they got it wrong. They got to be like us to be like the, the right church. Thankfully, there's only like one church that I know of in Champaign County that's like that. But that's one of the, the difficulties we have to, to deal with because it's a rather large church, a lot of followers following. But again, to, to work for unity in, in Champaign County and the world, we have to look at church differently. We have to view church differently than we, we've done to, differently than just coming to, to a building on Sunday mornings we have to look at churches, the people in the buildings in Champaign County, and how can we bring them together to do the work of Christ? And I bring this to you because they always say, we've got to get the pastor on board. We've got to get the pastor involved. We've got to get the pastor. That's good, but you don't have to. Each person in this room, in this church, in churches in Champaign County, who are saved and are filled with the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ is their Savior and their Lord and Savior, you're a pastor. Every single person who is saved in this world is a pastor for Christ. Because we're told in Matthew 28 to go and make disciples. Not the disciples, but we, everyone, to share the gospel, to share the good news throughout the world. Everyone is a pastor. 
So to bring unity to Champaign County isn't just up to, to me, the unity guy, or the pastors of Champaign County. It's up to each one of us in the congregation to do that, to help ask the questions. You know, where do you attend church at? What does your church do? Oh, really? Can we do that? I was actually at a pastor's prayer meeting in Salina, Ohio, and they meet every week. And they, one pastor says, well, our church is doing this and this for the, for the seniors. And the other guy goes, hey, our youth group would probably love to involved with it. Can, can we help? I was like, yeah, come on board. And so they got together, and they, they did that because they were unified. They were in the same room together, talking together, sharing stuff. And that's how this thing works, by getting together. But it does not be pastors. It can be anyone in the congregation. If you know someone else in the church, someone else in the church is doing it, bring it to the members of your church or this church. Or, you know, well, this church is doing something. I think we could get, in, our youth could get involved. We could get involved. How can we, how can we, who wants to go, who wants to be part of that? That's it's, it's how it starts. It starts small. Again, it, it, once it gets rolling, it, it's, I think it'd be great. I keep looking, I'm sorry, I keep looking at this verse and I can like, these verses here because they're very important because it kind of talks about what I'm talking about here is we're all one body of many parts. And that's what it says in put the next slide in 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 27. There is one body, but it has many parts. But all its many parts make up one body. It is the same with Christ. We were all baptized by one Holy Spirit. And we so we are formed into one body. It didn't matter whether we were Jews or Gentiles, slaves or free people. It doesn't matter where they come from, what race you were, what, who, anyone. We were all given the same spirit to drink. So the body is not made of just one part. It has many parts. So the, the foot, suppose the foot says, I am not, not a hand, so I don't belong to the body. By saying this, it cannot stop being part of the body. Suppose the ear says, I am not an eye, so I don't belong to the body. By saying this, it cannot stop being part of the body. If the whole body were, were an eye, how could it hear? If the whole body were an ear, how could it smell? God has placed each part of the body just as he wanted it to be. If all the parts were the same, how could there be a, a body? As it, as it is, there are many parts, but there is only one body. Again, it says here, there each congregation has its own culture, has its own way of doing things, their own doctrines and things, but they're all still part of the same body and they're all important to the body. One part of the body can do something that maybe the other part can't. Like it says here, the eye can't see, the ear can't hear. This congregation may be full of healers, this one may be full of prophets, you know, it's, it's the, each culture of a church is different. But if you bring them together, and working together to see and hear together, the more benefits you have for the community. The more you bring these talents and cultures of the churches together, not to separate, but to bring together to bring a more understanding to the community and to the world. Verse 21 says, the eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, it is just the opposite. The parts of the body that seem to be weaker are the ones we can't do without. The parts that we, again, the parts, the parts that we seem weaker, well, we're, that, that, they are a church of 300 people. They have all kinds of money. They have, they have all kinds of stuff like that. They, they have more resources than we do. You have the same Holy Spirit. You have the same power that created the entire universe it is yours as much as, much as it is theirs. And we can all share that together. And I hear that a lot too. Our church is too small. It is now. But what if you start working in the community and working together in the community? You know, maybe it won't be so small forever. Even if it does, the Holy Spirit is just as powerful. You can still be, this church small, you know, I won't say it's small, forgive me, I'm not, like, 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 <laughs> oops, sorry. I'm not saying that like, you guys are small and you know, there you think you're ineffective. I, I know, this is just, small churches can still do great things. And together with the, the bigger churches, they can do great things. You don't always have to have money. You don't need money to share the gospel. But you do have to have the, the, the will and the, the love for your community to actually want to do it. The parts that are like, the parts that we are think, like, one gets, we, never think of yourself as weak, I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say, never think of yourself as weaker. 
No matter what size your church are, because we all share the same spirit, we all have the Holy Spirit, the same power. The private parts aren't shown, but they are treated with special care. The parts that can be shown don't need special care. But God has put together all the parts of the body and has given more honor to the parts that didn't have any. And that way, the parts of the body that will not take sides, all of them that will take one another, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part shares in its joy. You are the body of Christ. Each one of you is a part of it. You are the body of Christ. Each one of you has a part in it. And again, one part suffers, the whole part suffers. We don't always see it, you know, church is suffering and we don't always know about it, but you, you can sense it throughout the whole church community it suffers because we're all brought together, we're all, we're all one body, we're all the same. I hope that what I've said today is that if I share my, my journey of unity, it hasn't been discouraging because when I started nine years ago, it's pretty much the same as it was nine years ago. And uh, my fault was, this is all on me, was I, I kept saying, I'm not doing enough, I can't do enough, I'm not doing enough, unity isn't coming around. It's my fault, I'm not doing it. And about two months ago, I met with a pastor and it, it didn't go well. Again, like I said, I yelled out a lot and he was, he was called me hypocrite because I wasn't doing the things his church was doing. I wasn't helping spread the, the, the idea of what that one church is doing and loving what his church is doing because it was so great, so fantastic. I was, it was my fault that it wasn't happening. Uh, that was the day I said, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this church and stuff. I'm done trying to, trying to get unique started in Champaign County because I've, I've failed. And you know, and then, so I, I prayed to God, I said, I'm done. I'm done with working in church unity. I, I, I can't do it anymore. It's taken a lot. I've done it for nine years. I've devoted my life to this one thing, and it's not any better. It's actually probably even worse than it was nine years ago. When I got done praying as I was done doing the church unity stuff, I had felt joy and peace like I hadn't felt in years. I was like so relieved that I take that pressure of, because I was doing it wrong. For nine years, I was trying to get unity in church. I kept trying and trying and trying. And the only thing God told me to do was tell churches I want unity in Champaign County. That's all he wanted. Everything else I was doing, all those nine years, I was doing all on my own. And I was putting all on my shoulders that things were coming, moving forward more. I put all myself and God's like, finally, I, I didn't tell you to do all that. That was, that was all you. By saying I'm not working, by, by, I'm not saying I don't want unity in Champaign County, I'm, I'm just saying that I'm no longer the unity guy. I want it, I'd love to have churches work together and I will do whatever I can to be part of it. I'm not gonna be leading it, I'm not gonna, you know, visit any more churches, I did that. I've, like I said, I've visited the 60 churches in Champaign County and you know, some in Clark County, some in local County. It's time for the church to do its part. I, I have told Champaign County churches, God wants you to be in Champaign County, now it's up to them to do it. The pressure's off me, I've always been the pressure on me for nine years to do that. I, I actually got, I got it from, you know, from different people in the church committee, you know, well, what are you doing, why isn't, there, why isn't it better, what, what have you been doing, why isn't, you know, what you, you, you had these events, they didn't, they didn't work out, and I, I, I would, take it personally. It's like, well, yeah, they didn't work out. What, what am I doing wrong? What, what could I, bless you. <laughs> what, could I have, what, could I have, what could I have done differently? And the whole time, God was like, I didn't tell you to do that. Again, this goes back to when I was talking about people getting saved. That isn't your job. You bring the gospel to them and they don't, if they reject Christ, that's not your fault. Don't put that on your shoulders. That's God's job. That's the job of the Holy Spirit to convict them and to, save, to get them saved. It is your job to like it is your job to, pre to present the gospel, but it's not your job to save. Like it wasn't my job to bring unity to Champaign County, which would have been great. Not for me. I didn't want to do it for, for personal glory, but I just to see the churches come together and see what, how the community would thrive by coming together. So what can you do? What's the action step? First, as of all things, pray about it. Pray. Like when I was taking Sunday school classes, like my lessons kept coming around around the same thing over again. I prayed about it and God gave me something to do. 
yeah, I took it to the next step and did spent nine years doing something I didn't really need to do, but you see, see, I did. I pray for what God wants you to do. Pray for what he wants this congregation to do. Pray for what he wants the churches of Champaign County to do. Pray for unity the way God wants it, not the way the unity guy, Eric, wants it, or the way you, you imagine it, because the way God wants it can be as far better than anything we can ever imagine. The unity that, I mean, he saved 3,000 people in one day. Imagine happening in Champaign County where we could start seeing people come to Christ every day. Seeing the churches in our community every day. A pastor once told me the greatest thing he ever, he ever heard as, as a pastor, he, he was, when he was on a community, people would be talking about, oh, you know that one church? They'd be talking about his church. That, they did this. It wasn't for pride, it was just the fact that his church is known for doing things in the community. Wouldn't it be great if people in the community start, you start hearing at Walmart going, you know, you know the churches of Champaign County, they got me a car. Or they got me transportation. I needed a babysitter and I couldn't afford it. They got me into a program like can now have a babysitter, watch my children so I can go to work, I can get a job, and I can eventually get a house. Wouldn't it be great if people of Champaign County start talking about, stop talking about politics. Don't even, please don't get me started. <laughs> but start talking about the church, united in Champaign County. The churches in Champaign County are doing this. Wow, it's amazing. Well, let's go see what that's about. Let's go, start, let's go start visiting, visiting these churches and find out what this love of Christ is about. Again, Christ said, the love you show for each other, the love you show for the least of these, people will know that I am the Son of God and that God has sent me here. And he will believe, you know, kind of paraphrasing, but he'll believe my story, my gospel. By your love for each other, this congregation, the congregation on the street, and your love for the people in the community, Saved and unsaved, the love, love is for every other. So, how do we, how, what's the action step? Pray. And when God speaks to you, move. Don't just think about it, don't overthink about it, overanalyze. I mean, you do need to, some things you might need to do in study of Bible, but pray about it and, and move. And ask what God wants you to do. And be, don't be surprised if He asks you to do something way outside your comfort zone. Nine years ago, well, before I started to Sunday school class, I was very, I'm, I'm an introvert. I hate talking in front of people. Well, I should say, I hate talking in front of people. I was very shy and scared and embarrassed and would get very nervous and, and sick. Now look at me. All because I followed Christ and followed what God wanted me to do, I am now here talking to you today. And hopefully I didn't bore the camera and put it to sleep like I did last time. I <laughs> hope the camera stayed awake this time. <laughs> but thank you for being here and thank you for listening to God's word. And again, Pray, study his word, and ask what he wants you and what's this congregation and the church to do. Let's bow our heads and pray. We thank you, Father, for this, this time, again for this time to come together and to share your word and to share your spirit, to share, of, like you said, we've talked over many times today, your love. Your love for us is amazing. You are love, and we need to share that love with each other our communities, our homes. And by this love, the world will know you, Jesus, because they've seen the love that you share with us, shared with them. They will see it, they will feel it, become, they'll want to be, they want, want to be a part of it. They want, to be a, they want to know this love that Christ has, the love that we have that is missing from their lives, the love that will, can change a community that can save a community from itself and help make things better, to unify as a congregation, unify as churches, as a church, and unify under the one true Savior we all have in common. We all have you in common, Lord Jesus. We all share you and your sacrifice and your love and your resurrection. We share this because we all love you. We all love each other. Please be with these people today as they travel and bless them as they go home and as they think of what they heard today and pray that you'll speak to their hearts and bring to them what you would have them to do in their lives and to share and share you throughout their communities and their homes. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen.